Hi, welcome to the video tutorial on Illustrator and Photoshop and using polar grids in Illustrator and then copy them over to Photoshop and manipulate them further in Photoshop. And also if you wanted to, you could actually transfer them back again into Illustrator. There's another possibility. So I've got a polar grid here, but let's go back right to the start. And where's the polar grid tool? I love the polar grid tool. It's a very, very useful tool tucked away right at the bottom over here, polar grid tool. It's a standard vector path. You can manipulate it in all kinds of different ways, creates lots of different designs and you can vary them. I've done quite a few videos on those. So we do simply double click there and you can see all the various settings, dividers there, radial, concentric, and I'm just gonna create basic design. So, and that just uses there the stroke, it's got no fill at this point, but if you want to color it, you can, of course, just simply add a color. And I'm just going to do that in this, but you can use maybe live paint. It's a great one of recoloring it, or maybe use effects and much, much more. But I'm just going to do it very basic. So fill, and I'm just going to add maybe a red background. If I actually selected it, <laughs> that would be helpful. So I'm going to select there, and now it's filled with red. So that's the key thing. You've got this lovely, colourful design, and you, of course, can manipulate it further. You can apply effects within here. So I'm just going to go down to maybe pass. You could do distort, uh, transform, maybe free distort. I say a number of different effects are available, but just free distort. So instead of obviously doing it there, you can just go over here, and you can distort it and warp the design. Click OK or perhaps use one of these ones, object, and go down to, down there, to envelope, distort, and warp there as another possibility. Or even better, using a new repeat feature. Repeat feature is a great new feature of 221. If you haven't got 221, this feature is not available. So something like radial, and you can see the radial design there. So you can create all kinds of fairly unique designs, some unusual ones maybe, but that's, I'm just gonna create that. So with that design there, and I'm gonna use that in Photoshop. Well, what I can do, I can always just copy and paste into Photoshop, but I personally prefer to use the library feature. I love the library feature. I think it's a really, really useful one. And I've got quite a few different designs that I've added to it using Polar Grid. Now I can expand this if I want to, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use what I've got here. So just going to quickly go over to library and you can see a load of different designs there, polar grid designs I've got there, as well as some others that seem to have sneaked into there as well. But to add it, simply just select the design and drag. Just drag over and you'll see it says plus there. So all you have to do, and you've got the plus there. Now, of course, what you can do, you can always just modify it maybe a little bit more. Maybe if you want, you think, oh, I'll just change it, maybe go for a, maybe a different color, green instead. You can also double click the design and go and edit the individual designs if you want. So you can maybe make a nice sort of design like that. Just resize it, come out of the isolation mode, and now you've got that design, and that can be, Let's bring up the libraries. Now, to find the libraries, window and libraries, as well as the properties just a bit further down from there. So again, simply just drag across, and now you can add it to any library. This is my Polar Grid Illustrator library, but I've got lots of other libraries with lots of different designs that I've stored away in this library, and that's part of the Creative Cloud. So it's stored away, stored on your Creative Cloud, and you can just bring back at any point very quick and easy. So once you've done that, now of course, what you can do, you can use this in Photoshop. That's the key thing next. We're in Photoshop 221. Now you might have 220, 219, etc. and it should work exactly the same. You've got libraries, as long as you've got libraries, that's the key thing, because you might have obviously an old Photoshop that doesn't have libraries. So with libraries, here's the libraries here, window and libraries. Obviously I've got layers and I've got properties, etc. They're quite useful. So libraries here, and you can see the designs that I created in Illustrator. You can just hover over there and it will say Illustrator, type Illustrator, type Illustrator, type Illustrator. That's where it comes from. 
Now, of course, this could have been any design. This could have been one of the rectangular grids. This could be a circular design. All types of paths could be used in exactly the same way. So what you can do, you can drag. So you can just drag over there. And you can then see the design there. And you will notice that they're slightly different. If you go to layers, you'll notice a little cloud there. That's, so it's part of the cloud. It's linked. It's linked in the way back to the illustrated copy. So any changes you do somewhere else, that is the sole copy. That's the key one. So change here, change everywhere. Now what you can also do, you've got smart objects one as well. So what you can do, I'm just going to go back to the library and I'm going to use this one now. So, but this time I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option and do that. And what happens instead, it will add it as a smart object. So I've got that as a smart object now. It's still pretty useful, the smart object. So you can see a different little thumbnail there. Also, what you can do, if you don't want that, of course, you can, I'm just going to drag the other one over. So I'm just going to go for this one. And I'm just going to drag it over normally. Got the design there. Of course, that would be part of the cloud. And what you can do, you can rasterize it. So if you just want to now make it as big as possible, because if you don't want, you might not want to. Uh, so if you go massive, it means if you desize it again, then it's not so bad as obviously creating something very small and then make it massive because it will degrade. So key thing is go to layer. And then you can rasterize it if you want to. So rasterize that or just rasterize the layer. So you've got now just a standard normal layer. So if you go to layers, you can see it. there's no smart object. There's no there. Now you might not want that. You might want it. I first personally, I prefer it as a smart object. Smart objects are always, I'm always happiest with. So I'm just going to work from the smart object. I just want to show the different things. So this design, I'm just going to remove that now. So we're going to go back again and simply just go to this one. This is the one I'm going to use, but hold down the Alt or Option. It's on the keyboard. Normally near the uh, Command or the Control or something. Quite often it's all over the place. So I'll just drag that over. And again, it's a smart object. Once you press Return, that is. You can see it's a smart object there. And you can resize it, of course. You can do all the various things. Hold down the shift if you want to keep it proportional. And you can see the design there. So what you can do, you can hold down the alter option again, and you can duplicate it. You can do those sorts of things. Also, what you can do, you can go to layer, layer style, maybe go to bevel and boss. You can add a nice bevel and boss to it. Maybe go down to drop shadow. You can add a nice drop shadow to your design. You can do that. You can also, because it's a smart object, you've got a smart object there, and you decide, you know what, I don't want those, but I'm just gonna just gonna go here to maybe image and adjustments, and then I can say hue and saturation. So I can recolor it. So I just quickly, and you'll see then you've got your artwork 42, you've got your smart filters there, calls it a smart filter. Basically, I always call it smart adjustment, but it's a smart filter, it's under there, you can always remove if you want. Also, what you can do, you've got filter as well. So if you want, you can go to maybe one of these ones, and I'm just going to go for blur. I always go for blur, but you can use any of them. Any of them, but it's blur is just, just as easy. So you can just quickly blur the design there. And of course, what you can do with that, you also can use, you've got blending modes. So you can double click there, and you can say darken instead. And you can get that sort of nice smudged, effect around that or overlay or exclusion and so on and so on. So you can create a variety of different designs. And if you want, you can always remove the blur very quickly by just clicking the little thing or just deleting it. You can delete it as well. And you can also distort this as well. However, the one thing you can't do when it's a smart object is that you can't go here, say like the smudge tool. You'll notice that you can't do anything like that. What you can do, also another thing you can do, and I'm just going to remove that one. I'm going to go to my library. Now, I've got lots of other designs here. I don't obviously have to, but these are all created in the same way. These are all artwork designs that were 
Holy Grid designs that are filled with different colours using maybe whereas, see, added colour there. Live paint. And you can resize it. And you've got that design there. And again, if you go back to the layers, you'll notice it's part of the cloud. Again, you might not want that. You may or may not. I don't mind, but I'm just gonna just gonna work with this. I'm just gonna add some. It's still basically a smart object. So what you can do, you can go to filters, and you can use various things like maybe add a lens flare to it. But that's just added to there. The underlying design is still untouched. So the polar grid is still as before. So if you just want to remove it, simply click there. But it's just been layered on. And also you can do exactly the same as before. Image, adjustments, and hue and saturation, or one or the other, or maybe invert. So you can invert it. Obviously inverts the whole lot there, but you can, so you can do a variety of different designs. But again, layer and layer style. And what you can also do, you can maybe, let's just, so I'll change that, resize it, hold down the alter option key. Again, just change that, move that more into the center there. Maybe go to image adjustments and human saturation. Let's just color it, change the color so it becomes more green there. Select both of them, you've got both selected there. What you can do is you can go to a layer and you can go to smart objects, convert to a smart object. So the whole thing is a smart object. So you've got to create all kinds of different polar grid designs using this. And as I say, it doesn't have to be a polar grid. This can be any object from Illustrator as well. And then what you can do, you can also go to filters and you've obviously got your neural filters. Some probably work well with it, but also you've got filter gallery, just select one of the filter gallery and you can quickly apply maybe effect like that. Sketches or bas relief, half tone, plaster, and that of course depends on the colors here. That's the key thing. So, if you've got different colors, that would have been a different response there. And of course, what you can do again, exactly the same as before, hold down the alter option key and duplicate the design. Now, this design, this, this, this polar grid, is still editable. You can still go back into Illustrator and you can edit it, and any changes will be reflected here as well. I'm not going to do that, but you could do it if you wanted to. And you can change these settings, these values at any point. So if you decide, you know what, I don't want that one, I can remove that, but I can always go and change the color here. Let's go and make it purple, darker, maybe a yellow. So you've got yellow there. Then I can go to filter and filter gallery again. Let's quickly apply it, click OK. And you can see the design there. And that's added to that. Select both of them again, and you can go to layer and smart objects and convert to smart object. So it's all one smart object. And at all points, this is still all editable. So you can double click into this, change things, double click, double click, all the way through back to the illustrator design, which you can then manipulate. And then all of that will be reflected in the design at the end. Well, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials every couple of days, so please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Also, I have tutorials for Photoshop, Illustrator, Critter, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Publisher, Painter, and many others. Also, please add some comments. Any sort of issues you've maybe I went too fast, maybe I didn't explain something very well, quite possible. And also uh, a dislike or like. Always appreciated. Thank you much.